Got you. Hello, All-Star clients, and welcome to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable presented by All-Star Veterinary Clinic, the podcast where we answer your veterinary-related questions while also having some fun along the way. Always. 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 Okay. Uh, on today's episode, we have myself, co-host and associate veterinarian, Dr. Ashlyn Duckwall, RVT, <laughs> Becca Kenny, veterinary <laughs> support specialist and inventory assistant, Becca Miller, whew, and my lovely co-host and head veterinarian who is finally back for an episode. <laughs> Dr. I'm leaking. It, we've missed you so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I have missed you. Oh, uh, uh, well, thanks. Stop leaving. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, where have you been? Ch- like, did you go to like Just overseas traveling. or something? <laughs> overseas. No, I did not do anything. <laughs> I am not that extravagant. I'm pretty boring. She went on a boat. Tennessee, Tennessee, Indiana. Yep. Tennessee, Tennessee, Indiana. Indiana. She Tennessee, just Tennessee, Tennessee, to our own Indiana. devices and hopes that she comes back to the clinic intact. Like, yeah, that's right. It's exactly. Fine. <laughs> Hasn't exactly. caught fire yet. I try not, yep, and I try not to do anything that will cause me to lose limb. That's good. <laughs> don't lose pick limb. up a horse's foot. Un, don't un pick limb. up a horse's foot. That's exactly right. <laughs> and break your back in your adventures. How are you guys today? Yeah. A little tired, but Pretty good. I'm here. But you're doing great? This. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. You have to bring recognition to TikTok. 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 Tickety talk. I like to call it tickety talk. Listen, Harris has been killing it with the TikTok. Yeah, Kill Kill it. we don't like. I'm sad it's the burrito challenge. I kind of wanted to do that. The burrito challenge. Yeah, oh my gosh, you guys! Oh, I one's laughed one's so hard that when I saw fun. that. Yeah, and I think part of it is because you know the people. You know, you know, yeah. you know the people doing it, and so then it's just like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, who was it that smacked Courtney right in the face? I think it was Michaela. I think it was. Michaela. I think it was Michaela. Yeah. It, it was she just good. kept swinging it. And she just kept going, and then it yeah. broke. And I'm like, well, that's what you get. <laughs> like our videos have been such a good mix of like educational, but then we have to keep it funny. So I think that it's- he posted the one of me scaring Sophie, which I thought. Was yeah, that's funny because that was. Hilarious. I was watching it in person and then I watched it again in the video. It was still funny the second time. Yeah. Like, poor Sophie. She Someone was due to get to scared anyway. Trash. Yeah. It was a little overdue. Yeah. She it was, was just totally. To do but it was job. such a perfect hiding spot. I know. Oh, yes. And that box. And you were was very perfect. patient. <clears throat> I was. I waited in there for like 30 minutes. I was sweating my <laughs> butt off. Yeah. I would love to say she's joking, but no, it was probably 30 minutes because Sophie was like, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. I'll come help you. And she's just sitting there and we're like, you can see your shoestring. And that's when the shoes came off. And <laughs> I thought the shoes were what was going to get you when she was like why are there shoes in this box <laughs> and we're just like we have no idea <laughs> oh my gosh that's awesome so yes kudos awesome. harrison nice job on yep. the tiktok we've got some really good educational stuff on there so <clears throat> um and then if people want to see other types of stuff let us know because yep. um harrison's done a good job of like editing and putting like words with it so you can kind of see some of the stuff and <laughs> along with fun <laughs> you know what was interesting was that when harrison was talking about the videos and the TikTok stuff that he that it's a great like outlet for the staff, like yeah. fun, oh, yeah. the fun stuff. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. a good way of just like decompressing. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't ever think of it like that. Get you like, out of the a, veterinary yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. and it allows you to escape for a second, yeah. you know, and have fun because yeah. the the job is so like intense a lot of the time, like repetitively. Yeah. Throughout a day, and so it's kind of like like the I mean, you think of up. the yeah with the tortilla. F- hitting each other in the face oh yeah the tortilla challenge yeah i mean isn't there something about like laughter making you like healthier or oh, something, yeah. something something something, oh. something yeah something, like something. you're supposed Does to you burn a lot of calories for, like 30 too? minutes a day <clears throat> or so because it just helps your heart and yeah i think burn calories and things like that but trying to laugh at least you know a little bit in every day i think oh, I definitely not only does it help you health wise but i think just <laughs> mental health wise like sure. it's well, so much better <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see Becca sitting back and start drinking, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and then she'll start crying. Yeah. I was gonna say, except she never laughs that quietly. No, like, it's ever gonna happen. I always no, know exactly never. where Becca is. In the no, clinic. no, oh, no. I do. When I'm doing ultrasound, I'm like, I can hear the whole story, and so I can be like, wait, watch this, listen to this. Becca's gonna. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, there she goes. Yeah, there. Uh, it's awesome. I yeah, love it. yeah, it's perfect. That's something I look forward well, that's to. A good sign. <laughs> so we're laughing here still. So okay, questions. Ooh, the best section. <clears throat> Would you rather? You have a hole in your oh, pants. I don't know, but that's one of my children's <laughs> songs. Okay, what don't know song what was that, it. Um, the whole snore. The whole story. The whole snoring by who? The whole story. Strap. Single, the whole story. What? 
It's got an E next to it, so it's probably not very good. Oh, and oh. it's explicit. <laughs> it's yep. explicit. Explicit. Okay. Yeah, I have literally a hole in my knee at this spot every single scrub pants I own, and I just had to order more. <laughs> I can't make it a whole year. You're Sorry, like random you're side. looking pretty trashed over there. I, right? I know. I'm I wringly. I'm hairy. I can't, I'm dirty. It's inappropriate. Well, you know what that means? I'm working hard. That does mean that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Creeping and crawling on the floor with the animals. If I don't come home with peanut butter or cheese on so me in a day, I probably didn't work hard enough. <laughs> uh, little, little. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Would you rather eat your pet's food or lick one of their toys? Duck wall. <clears throat> eat their food, for sure. I've always wondered. <laughs> so, like... fun fact, when I was little, Mm-mm. I would eat my dog's food. And my parents would have to put it up. Because I would crawl over and eat it, and my dog would bark at me while I was. Explains so it. much. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions yes. answered and uh, answered. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so you're still here. I'm so, <laughs> so clearly, dog gibble does not kill. Clearly, yeah. I don't remember anything, but I would crawl over to the dog bowl and just start eating the food, and then my dog would just bark and growl at me because I was eating his food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it mind you, it was a basset hound named Bo. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why I like bassets. I love bassets, but <laughs> yeah. So I would definitely probably eat food since that's what I grew up doing. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody here eaten dog food besides you and that can remember it? No. Um, I had a dog treat before. They're so yeah, salty, yeah. right? It's supposed like to be amazing. so salty. Yes. The, you ate a bakery one? No, like I three would dog go bakery. buy a bakery one. You tried it? The three dog yeah. bakery, I did try a bite of Leonard's birthday cake. It's because it's made with like peanut butter and it just tasted really bland with a little bit of peanut butter flavoring. Yeah. Hmm. So... I know xylitol, so it explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not the good. No sweeteners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there's probably like no sugar. Cake. Probably not the best. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. What about you? What would you do? Eat the food? I, or I don't lick know. I think I would probably lick one of Sirius's toys because I could find one that he hasn't used in a while. Mm, so, but can carry him outside and put them in their poop, though. The, the plus side, though, pee on them. Yeah, he usually doesn't carry them the outside. Although he did have toys. one that he carried outside. He had a, this dragon that he carried outside, and then he immediately peed on it. So we just referred to it as the pee dragon for months. Why did he pee on it? Was just, because he wasn't paying attention to what he did. He dropped it, and then he got distracted, came back, and he peed right on the dragon. Oh, my god! So gosh. it was the pee dragon, <laughs> and it just, like, lived in the pantry away from everything else where I could lock it. Because I was like, I don't want you eating this till he finally destroyed it. And Is that the one that away. you would lick then? No, definitely not. <laughs> that's a good not. question. <laughs> oh, that's no. the only one you're allowed to lick, so. <laughs> Ooh, if that's the case, then. Oh, that's hilarious. Might have to rethink my answer if that's the only one I'm allowed to lick. Oh. Leonard's not allowed to have toys. Hmm. No toys. For money. Yeah, exactly. What would you do, King? I would eat the food. Especially if it's like one of those farmer's dogs. Yeah. Gosh, that oh, stuff looks heck like, yeah. Looks Fresh pet. Great. Yeah. The mm. raw, I don't know if I would do oh, raw. Oh, no. That's no, why we don't recommend no. it. I know, I know, I know. But I'm just saying some people do give their dogs like chicken necks <laughs> and chicken feet. Oh That's no disgusting. no! They like pulverize it up so it's like the bones and the meat and stuff. And mm, yeah. people Bone swear meal. by raw diet. I just I just don't. Nope. I mean, after all everything that we've learned, I just oh, salmonella. Yeah, so, so much stuff oh. in there. Oh no! And they're not even getting correct nutrients. Well, there are some sources of raw diets that are appropriate. Like as far as like disease for like, do you know what I mean? Like you have to. Oh, like you can't just go. Stuff? You just can't go buy chicken. <laughs> go buy yourself I some, some chicken, chicken and then Fresh cut out. up the chicken <laughs> Do you guys bones. remember that the, la- the lab that Schmokes lab that ate a whole tray of chicken <laughs> we breasts? We just talked about that. And we yeah. made her puke and it was whole chicken breasts. Oh my God, no. Her mouth. She showed a video. It was like, Chicken breast. Chicken breast. <laughs> home intact. It was hilarious. Oh, my it was God. Disgusting. She literally swallowed these chicken breasts whole. And they were like the big Costco chicken breasts. They weren't like the teeny tiny yeah. Kroger ones. Well, she was like, like, why like stop at one when you can have 10? <laughs> like, I'm kind of sad that I missed this. Like, it's one of those things where it's like you're watching something horrifying, but you can't look away. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of sad I missed It's like the it. hot dog eating contest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chicken breast, chicken breast. Joey, chicken breast. <laughs> Joey Chestnut. Like, well, that, guy, that guy's an animal. But oh, no, it was God. two dogs, and she didn't know which dog ate it, so we yeah. Yeah, to make both funny. dogs puke. Oh, that second dog And the dog one dog was, was so just sitting pissed, there just vomiting chicken breasts, and the other dog's like, it's vomiting nothing. <laughs> Giving the other dog <laughs> like, the finger. This like, is not my fault. <laughs> I didn't do it. 
I had a puppy last night that ate onion. So oh, and the whole hospital. The whole hospital oh, smelled everything. of onion. Yeah. How much onion did it eat? It was a half they of an onion. In. It was about, what did I calculate? I don't remember how many grams it ate. Like 30 grams? A lot. Yeah. She's getting spanked like tomorrow. like a fifth of an onion. <laughs> Good She'll be in tomorrow. night. Oh, yeah. my gosh. We might want to do a CBC on her just in case. Yeah. I mean, she puked it all up. Yeah, we gave it her smelled like onion. So. The whole hot, I could smell it in surgery. That's yeah. Wow. Dinky it was. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Anyway, number two, would you rather, mm, no, would you rather your pet always smell bad or always make an annoying noise? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Becca Miller. Oh, man. I don't know. I am much more sensitive to smells than I am sound. So I think that I could block out an annoying sound. So I probably want that one just because there are certain smells that will definitely make me gag. And I'm sure that that's what he would have, something that would just be atrocious. So I would definitely want the sound. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Well, can you give your dog a bath? I mean, but no, it's, it's like a permanent it's like smell. It's like a permanent smell. Permanent smell yeah. Yeah. Or, oh, God, I don't know. Noises really tick me off. Same. I really, I cannot. <laughs> That's a no-brainer yeah, for me. I get overstimulated I so easily, so I would have to say a smelly dog, probably. Yes. Oh, I, man, I'm going to no smell. Oh. The I don't, smallest sound. Yeah, like the just yippee. Yeah. It makes my blood boil if and I like I, it. Yeah, like I said, I get overstimulated by too many noises. Yep. So. Yep. Well, fitty, fitty. I mean. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have not either, neither, but. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> would you uh, rather eat dog food I mean, or toys? Me. Like, we're, let's go back to the first one. I really do want to try, like, one of those benefits that, like, are colorful. It does, like, appetizing. Not going to lie, when I'm feeding you know, a dog at night, the wet food, like, the smell, sometimes I get hungry. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the ID stew is not bad. Yeah. So, oh, ever, no. Those are horrible. Courtney, Courtney said the same thing. I go, it. man. I, I think uh, we uh, do like, a Ugh. dog food tasting. We should. Thing. As long as we don't Multiple? get sick from <laughs> no. yeah, like, oh, I was no. going to say, how healthy is the that? The kidney diet, the like, wet kidney. Blech, or ZD. Oh, oh. That looks awful. That's because it doesn't have anything in it. Poor dog. It looks like gel. They're allergic to air, so they can't eat anything. Yeah. 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 I think, though, all fish based diets are absolutely like once you oh, crack open nah, that can man. or open that bag, it's yeah. like. Um, Although the AD doesn't smell terrible. Even the tuna or the <laughs> salmon. Oh, the kitty salmon food is even like bright pink because oh. it's additives. I'm like, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> no, it's not good. Okay. All right. Would you rather be able to climb trees like a squirrel or dig burrows like a mole? Easy. Yeah. Climb. Duh. Yeah. Duh. Oh, yeah. Definitely climb. Who wants to get dirty and dig holes? Not me. I would climb too. I would yeah. rather climb. Absolutely. We could see Someone, everything. Harrison. We could see everything. <laughs> Especially <laughs> here like in Washington, you got those really tall trees. Yeah. Climb at the top, I can see. could see everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I hate squirrels. How do you hate squirrels? They just piss me off. <laughs> they ate my tomatoes last year. Oh. It was either that or a rabbit. <laughs> I, w- I feel like it would be a rabbit, not a squirrel. I don't no, know. The you squirrels are the really squirrels good. Are ass- oh. Yeah, they are. The squirrels are, are turds. Yes. And they sit and bark at you, and they'll come Love down it. just far enough. the donkey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> squirrels are turds. And a hole is in the ground. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Put it together. <laughs> Put them together. Donkey in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Listen, Oopsies. squirrels are eating her tomatoes. Yes, thank not you. these blasted rabbits. And I'm telling you because they're agile. They come <laughs> down and they're like, do 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 do, and they take that tomato. What does the bunny yeah. do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work that way. Goes, nah, nah, nah. The squirrel comes fl- comes right down off the fence. I don't know, man. There's squirrels in my neighborhood are fat. So yes, something <laughs> they are, and they are, and they just pick those tomatoes, eat them, and they're like, peace out, and yeah. they leave. The cats in my neighborhood are also fat, so they must be eating the squirrels. Especially <laughs> if there's seeds like around your, yeah. like you know what I mean. Like they're just sitting there eating, and I have like a wired fence over my veggie garden this year. Like try that. Yeah, you know what? We got it. We just a have female a dog is a what <laughs> <laughs> with an itch. <laughs> but we are we're so gonna do this all clever. night. <laughs> okay. We're so clever. All right, case collections. Mm. Let's oh, get serious. Our favorite part. <laughs> I am going to talk about. I'll talk first. Okay, fish hooks. Yeah, they're great. It's a popular time of year. It is popular. Fishing. I think there was even. 
uh, it was like a take your kid fishing week, like last week, DNR or something. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, you, it was, you could fish without a license. Was that it? Like it was just a couple go, weeks ago. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah and so, license. you know, fish hooks are like so problematic because dogs put their noses down, they'll sniff or, you know, they use it. They, they like if it's, especially if it's dangling, they're going to try and catch it with their mouth. There's but if there's, on it, like a hot dog if they're, on it? yeah, mm-hmm. hot dog, worms. chicken, worms, mm-hmm. you know, or if you're Calvin and you're casting, <laughs> then you might just like by accident with castings, you know, get someone. <laughs> Wait, who do you get? hook? He didn't do that, but that oh. would be something Calvin would do. <laughs> that would be something. Was... Lance got uh, Johnny. Johnny left his fishing gear down on the ground and lance got stuck and it was on a freaking sunday of Always. course Always. i was like you've got to be <laughs> i'm like i'm there six and a half days a week <laughs> and you mean to tell me that you get your freaking mouth stuck on the day that i'm not in the clinic so i had to bring him up here uh, propofol him yeah and those little barbs so you can't yeah just like pull just it out. out yeah so usually you have to push it all the way through or so mm-hmm. it can be a real problem cut it and then pull it that's yeah. what we had to do with the shepherd that yep. you're talking about is yeah. that what we ended up doing Did you yeah they it? were barbed so duck yeah. or not duck wall your duck wall dudley had to cut it cut the barb and then pull it through the ear like yeah. it was literally flapped stuck in i mean he'll show a picture but yeah it was it was crazy yeah i heard about it. i just missed it was there so was there just a small puncture? It was a double it hook then? one. It was one of those like big fish hooks. Oh gosh! Yeah. It was like it looked like a fish, and yeah. it had hooks on the end, and the hooks were barbed. Yeah, and so Ooh. they just they catch so easily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, know. yeah, they're supposed to catch fish, big fish. But I mean, it, that was a definitely a. Yeah. My dad loves to fish, so I call myself <laughs> an expert. But at least they didn't swallow it. That's that happened. Is true. That has happened. That happened. Were you, were you here when that happened? I don't think so. It was, and I had to do a gastrotomy, and you, it was stuck in the stomach wall, so it was really like a pain in the. I don't so know, what'd maybe you I do? You just got it out. I mean, it just took longer. Just, it wasn't like you oh, could just go. Let's like go get the fish hook. Neat, neat. Yeah. <laughs> it was like or make them vomit. Can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we I just had the same thing. You had to cut it and then push it through, and then he was fine. So okay. no biggie. Okay. But they've it's been in case. lips, noses, ears. I mean, they just get stuck. Yeah. Tell and then the dog cheeks. freaks out. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. then they're constantly yep. trying to get it out. And then you can't like touch them because they won't let you touch it because it hurts. So the moral yep. of the story is keep your fishing gear up. Yep. Or the dog away. Or the dog away. Both. Okay. What about you? What's your case? Um, I'm going to go with my case that I had today. So a seven month old large breed dog, a cane corso. And presented for back a couple months ago, a month ago for limping. So on exam, nothing crazy, whatever. We did anti-inflammatory, he improved, but then the limping came back. And of course, he's a puppy, so he's romping around. He doesn't know to rest, take it easy. So we do x-rays. And unfortunately, his elbow is pretty uh, pretty jacked. So he's got um, definitely elbow dysplasia is the broad term, but we think an ununited and canal process. So it's essentially where the bone doesn't completely what seal over, I guess is the way to put it. And so um, that's a little detail of elbow dysplasia. And so we did submit the x-rays to radiologists to confirm we didn't miss anything else because the growth plates are all opened. And so it makes it a little bit harder to evaluate x-rays that way. So we'll get that back and then discuss like Probably orthopedic surgeon referral and maybe surgery. And he's, I mean, he's going to grow till he's like two years old. So yeah. it's a really yeah. tricky. He's already huge. Yeah, he's a really tricky thing. So we have him on anti-inflammatories until we get more answers. Got it. Yep. Very cool. We yeah. see a lot of juvenile orthopedic bone disease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's usually the elbow. And my, my Especially um, experience. Especially dogs. Yeah. Hips hips I think elbow is the most common. Yep. No, oh, shoulder than elbow? Shoulder, elbow? Elbow, shoulder, hip to then bone, hock. I, guess. Hip is I don't know. Like way. it's in terms of like, yeah. I don't know. I can't yeah. remember, but it's something like that. That's yeah. probably why you see a lot of elbows. Yep. That would make sense. Elbow is a jacky joint. Yes, it, it is. It has a weird joint. Yep. Okay. Becca, what about you guys? Oh, Becca. Oh, both Beccas. <laughs> Whichever, Becca. Becca Miller. We just rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> you can go if you want. Okay. Um, so we, this is more of just kind of a, I don't know. Just a good idea, I guess, more. So I'm with Dr. Faust all the time. We see all of the cats 
well, not all of them, but most of them. And ninety <laughs> percent, yeah, like ninety percent of them. And I don't know. Today, I guess, was just a rough day. We had a lot of you know fractious, very stressed out cats. So one of the things we always recommend if you do have a cat that you know is going to be more nervous is pre-medding um, before they come in. So we use gabapentin, which we can have usually made into tuna flavor, chicken flavor, anything that they're going to take, um, just to help relax them. So it's something that we like to use to make it easier for nail trims or vaccines or blood draws. And it just helps them relax because it's a stressful situation getting a cat in the carrier, getting it all the way here. And, you know, so we want them to be as comfortable as possible. So some of the things that we always recommend is leaving the carrier out so that they know it's a safe place to be in, using feel away, whether it's diffusers or the spray, which is just a pheromone to help relax cats in general. Um, and it's a great thing to have the feel away diffusers if you have more than one cat, because um, you can get them in a multi-cat version where it just relaxes everybody. So we try to make it as simple as possible. So if you have a cat that you're not sure, if you think it's going to be a little iffy when it comes in, call us beforehand. I've had some people that we haven't seen their cat recently, but we know they get stressed out. Sure, I'll get it filled for you. Just come and pick it up and let's make it easy for them so that they're relaxed and comfortable while they're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Plus their car much. rides then are better. Yeah. I mean, oh, everything gosh, about yeah. it's better. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's stressful for everyone involved. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's only like a small percentage of cats who really like riding in the car uh, and in their yeah, carrier. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who are more like dog-like than they are cat-like. Maybe that way. more like kittens. Yeah. yeah. yeah just... And I feel like it's because they don't quite know yet. And that's one of the other big things is we always recommend making sure they're in a carrier for the safety of you and the cat mm -hmm. in the car just because if the cat gets under your feet, <laughs> yeah. um, if something freaks it out and it, you know, decides to jump on your head while you're driving. But, oh, gosh. So we recommend definitely the carriers. Oh, absolutely. But, so yeah. people drive without their cat in a carrier? Yikes. Yes. Um, that has happened where people have come in just kind of holding on to them, which is if – I get it. If that's where you think they're most comfortable, if they definitely don't like the carrier, then yeah. you want to make it simple. But for safety reasons, the recommendation is always find a carrier that they enjoy, that they're comfortable in size-wise, whether it's a soft-sided <sighs> carrier, one of the hard ones. We want them safe and contained so that they're not hurting themselves or you when you're trying to drive down the road. Mm -hmm. And if they decide to run because, you know, you hit a bump and it freaks them out, well, <laughs> if they're yeah. not in a carrier, <laughs> it could cause some real trouble for yeah. everybody involved. <laughs> I like the spaceship ones, the backpacks. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Like, yeah, yeah. Astronaut <laughs> yeah where they can look out. So cool. <laughs> those so are awesome. <laughs> we need to get some for Ralphie and Randy. We'll just carry them around. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ralphie, such a brat. I love Ralphie. No, Ralphie's I bad. love Ralphie. No, he loves me. No, no he's he not. Gives me kisses. Yeah, and then he comes into surgery while you're during, doing. Yeah, that's the one time I'll be yeah. like, hmm. He's bad. He's naughty. You're going on the streets if you come in my surgery table. <laughs> on the streets. <laughs> on the streets. <laughs> they're both so rotten. We spoiled them. So they're yeah. at a point where it's like, we did this to ourselves, but at the yeah. same time, like, I need you to take a step back while I'm trying to type. I don't need your help. I promise I can do it on my own. They have no social awareness. That's what I like they're about them. They're too social. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. is that they have no boundaries. Yeah. Just so, like, then they're up on the counter when a client comes in, which yeah. I think makes the clients happy. And then, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then they're, they're riding on the carts and they're doing, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, like, they're just <laughs> the like. The carts are funny. I got it. Now. It is so, they're so funny. I was wheeling, cart is the best. I was okay. wheeling my chair to the other side yesterday and Randy, like, heard the wheels and comes up and is looking up, like, yep. if he could get up there and. He just they need one of those like remote trains or something. They can be, can be like, <laughs> a train is leaving the station. Yeah. And I then it's like, do, do. and then when they, they hear the beep, beep, they're like, do, do. you know, they run towards yeah, it. All they need is wheels and they're here for it. But yeah, your yeah. plan to make pharmacy their home base definitely works because the clients love it when they come in to pick up meds and there's just Ralphie or Randy laying on the, yeah. on the counter. The counter. Yeah. We had somebody come in yesterday. They didn't even need anything. They just wanted to see the cats because, um, -uh. yeah, so they – um, where they saw the cats in the window. And so I'm not sure if they were clients or if they were just over at the diner, but they saw the cats in the window. And he said that his wife is not a fan of cats. So he and the daughter came in and they were just kind of <laughs> loving on Ralphie and Randy. Just I love it. And I was like, That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. what they're awesome. here for. Give them all the love and attention because yeah. they'll take it. But yeah, yeah I was no like, kidding. yeah, my wife doesn't like cats. And we just wanted to come in and say hi. We're like, <laughs> okay. That's let's so go. cool. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Very cool. Uh, so mine is... Well, recently, I should say, we've had two cases of uh, what's called uh, GDV or bloat, um, gastric dilation volvulus, right? So basically what that is, um, 
is when the stomach twists um, on itself and basically stricks is stricks it and yeah 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 we have our handy dandy have a, demo show us yeah. an example so uh this is an empty stomach an empty stomach so yeah you got to swish it around so this is so what an empty stomach looks like how light it is and it's yeah. not oh, going so, to happy. It's so, so happy so happy the and one end is the esophagus and one end is the pylorus yep you need something put in there and it's nice and empty oh you have a food now wait food got put <gasps> in the stomach oh no <gasps> Now, What's gonna happen? active, active what happens? dog. Active dog? Yeah. And oh, no. Twist. Oh, and twist again. Oh, no, it doesn't no. do it twice. Sorry. <laughs> um, it just does it once. <laughs> but let's try this one more time. Because when there's air in it, I think she got it, carried it's away. really. Yeah, she did. I got carried away. It was so exciting with this demo. <laughs> <gasps> That's okay. boom. That's amazing. And it's twisted, and there's no blood supply. Mm-mm. Zero. Blow. See, all that, see all see that, that gas in there? Building? Oh, shoot. My air's leaving. <laughs> so basically, um, wow. it really, it's very common in your giant breed dogs, deep chested dogs, uh, things that can, like I, the past couple of dogs that we've had was a, like an 80 pound lab. And then we had a German shepherd, um, mm-hmm. but it could, it's, it's deadly. I mean, if it's not treated right away, it, it can be very deadly and, um, you know, symptoms to look out for. Well, some, to avoid, I should say, is having them eat too quickly, exercise after eating, drinking too quickly, um, something that can just overpower the stomach or over stimulate the stomach. Uh, and then, um, symptoms to look out for is being super lethargic, bloated stomach, obviously like very bloat, hard round stomach trying to vomit but not vomiting uh not eating uh but yeah i feel like it was sweat the past couple of months we've had two cases mm-hmm. um and i've had to go to emergency surgery and both are doing fine as yep. far as i know but uh just something to keep uh you know a, you're aware of uh, especially if you have a big dog that's deep chested like your great danes german shepherds uh what else um i mean those are two yeah. The, the obvious ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, standard poodles. I actually just had a standard poodle the other day, and that's one where they're they're deep chested enough. Yeah, they're not that they can like huge. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. So yeah, it's and then it's, actually it, have, it's one of like the, we don't have very many true emergencies in veterinary medicine. But that's it like a true emergency. Yeah, yeah. Quit. it's it one is. of them. Yep. You take an X ray and you see the X ray and you move. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So I think Doctor Pulse. Did one and she did awesome. She kicked butt. I don't know who did the German Shepherd. That was me and Pulse. You and Pulse did mm-hmm. the German Shepherd. Yeah. Okay, and then Doctor Pulse did the lab. Yeah. So, um, which the owner actually knew that it was a bloat because she had previously had a dog um, that had bloated, and so she knew the symptoms. What is that? That's my phone. Just ignore. Oh, okay. <laughs> she so no she knew the lab. symptoms. Right so she uh, she rushed the dog here, and um, I believe he's doing just fine. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that the if you intervene, like if the time frame in which you intervene leads to the success of the yeah, oh, right. I can't remember what the percentages are, it, but then yeah. the intestines start dying and yeah. right. retching is another one. Like I guess vomiting and not being able to, but like that hacking, like constantly. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we had one shortly after I started that I remember because I was working up in grading at the time and. That, you know, somebody came up and they're like, hey, we have this emergency coming in. Like, this is like a legit emergency. We need you to come get us right away. And unfortunately, with that one, it was too late by the time that we had gotten him. He passed shortly after, mm. you know, he had gotten here. But it was one of those moments of like, I had never seen everybody in the <laughs> clinic just go, no, I need you to call me urgently. Like, if you don't know how to use Vocera to call somebody urgently, this is how you do it because I need to know because right. it is one that – so it's one of those things that I will always remember now that I'm like, okay, oh, what's going on? Yeah, we're going to get you in now because I have now experienced what it's like when we can't, unfortunately, save Excellent. someone mm-hmm. doing this. So, yeah. yeah, it is kind of that scary moment of when you see everybody in the clinic running, <laughs> you're just like, I'm going to back out of the way. Like if, <laughs> I, if I know that I can't help, if my skills are not needed, I'm going to back out of the way so you can do what you need to do. Yep. Also preventative, too. I mean, for especially for those who have those big breed dogs. When you're going in, if you do plan on fixing them, neutering, spaying them, we can always go in and do a castropexy. I mean, it's not – doesn't necessarily prevent it because I think I know of a dog that's still yeah. bloated with a gastropexy, but you can tack the stomach to the wall to place it so it has a lower chance of, yeah. of twisting. Mm-hmm. Or twisting, yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting. 
It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, dogs are crazy, man. Do cats bloat? Nope. Nope. Cows oh, I do. Did have, oh, well, not, I knew cows did. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. flick. Yep. Yeah. And then you, like, one way you can fix them is you put them down and then then you this is totally simple didn't you don't you like put them on their back or something put them put them on their side and i don't remember which side it is because yeah. that was like however many years ago <laughs> and then you the use room. a board yeah. I think a board and then you the board holds whatever in place and then you f- roll them yep and so i'm like and it's so flips it to roll them a certain, certain way yeah. it's like they have to be on a certain side and then yeah. rolled a certain way because i think they only twist a certain way or yeah. something like that i had one of my classmates she um it wasn't her directly but Someone that was out in practice had a, was it a Maltese or a Shih Tzu have a bloat? No. Uh, yes. Now, bloat I could see, but not like GDV. Or, no, sorry. I meant GDV. Yeah. Like we call it, yeah. Had a full-blown GDV. Wow. Yeah. She like took the x and she goes, okay. okay. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, usually it's I don't know. Of. I don't know anything else about it. I just know it was a Every small bloat breed. I've I was seen, like, what? The dog has been over at least 80 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. The first one I saw was Irish Wolfhound. He weighed 146 mm, pounds. That's a that's and a person. It was it, no, it, yeah, it literally was. It was yeah, and uh, it was an older older dog. So I don't think the owners elected to do surgery just because of the age and everything. But yeah, it was yeah. crazy, mm. crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Medicine's crazy. <laughs> okay. okay, listener question. I've never said that title before. <laughs> listener question. <laughs> Okay, what? <laughs> You're like. <laughs> is there something you need to remind me or say? <laughs> no. Okay, so the question is, how do dogs typically act or can act during fireworks coming up on the 4th of July? And what are Very great timely. ways to address it? What? Back of the uh, bell, go. All right. <laughs> well, uh, from experience, my dog... Uh, Leonard uh, is severely afraid of fireworks. So we use, um, which works very well on him, other dogs not so much, but for him it's called trazodone. Um, it's basically just a sedative uh, that you can give to dogs that just relaxes them, um, helps them rest. We use it for dogs that uh, post operatively while they are in recovery. It just helps kind of just cool their mind and, um, especially for him who hears a firework and runs and shakes and barks. And it's just a horrible thing to watch. Runs and hides in the bathtub. Um, It really does help keep him calm. Um, That's one of the, at least one of the drugs that we like to use. But there are other drugs. So what are some symptoms that they exhibit when they have noise phobias? Are we going to act them out? I know we really wanted to. We're so clever. We should have. We should have. Running and hiding. Running and hiding. Trembling. Yeah, whining, pacing, panting, sometimes hiding under stuff, accidents sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. chewing severe drywall. Oh, like, yeah. I mean trying cowering, to get out. Yeah, just trying to get out. Ears down, tail tucked. It's, it's like, horrible. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. It's sad. It's really sad. Running away. Like I've had people like lose. Uh, so many people lose their dog on Fourth of July because they keep it outside, and then they shut off the firework and the dog just runs. Yeah, because yeah. it's just trying to get away. Cause yeah, it it, they don't know what it is. No, so yeah, they're right. trying to get away. It's just it's horrible. Yep. And. I, I think an important uh, an important thing about the trazodone is giving it like prior to the start oh, yeah. or any Absolutely. med, any not med. even just the trazodone. Mm-hmm. You have to start it before fireworks, like get it in their system the day before or the morning of, because otherwise their adrenaline's gonna just crush the it. it. Yeah. So other therapies that could be used for noise phobias. Um, I know one of the things we've recommended is if you have a dog that's comfortable in its crate making the crate a nice, safe place for it. So last year, I knew I was going to be out of the house during 4th of July. So for Sirius, I set up his crate. He had his blanket in there, the blanket that goes over him, and I put music on. To help kind of cancel out the noise of the fireworks, I left music or TV or something going so that he's hearing that louder than what he's hearing outside. So if you don't necessarily want to go straight to meds, you can try just altering the environment a little bit. Make sure they're safe. Make sure they've got other noises that they're used to that'll overpower some of those big, loud explosions. Yep. I think the background noise is so helpful. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Music, TV, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that is not a loud boom. Yeah. There's the the Thunder shirt, Mm -hmm. which is that compression of it, which is calming, I guess. But 
you have to remember to train the thunder shirt. You can't just stick it on them when there's um, storms or fireworks because yeah. they're going to then associate That's it That's one with way that. to train the thunder shirt. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> you train to associate <laughs> it with something bad. Yeah, it's like, right. oh, great. Yeah, yeah, like, this yes. is on means I need yes. to be scared. Yeah, so put you, on when they're happy, they're positive, they get rewarded. Treats, so. treats, treats. Yep. There's also um, Adaptil mm-hmm. or Cilio. AD. Cilio. And well, that's a drug. Yeah. yeah. But then there's, you know, um, did I say that right? Adaptil. Adaptil, yeah. Adaptil, yeah. yeah. And so and that comes as a diffuser or collar. Yep. And so that's um, a pheromone that reduces stress and anxiety. They've actually studied that one with, with in particular, like noises. So for noise phobias, some people might have seen the commercial or you guys might have seen the commercial where the dog's in the car and they were like... And the you no, know, no one's seen that. No. It was last summer, <laughs> and it was about it was for that product. Oh, nice. Um, and so anyway, it's funny. The commercial is funny. Um, so there's that. Some people will use CBD oil. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, they some people have tried that. There's also a natural product called <coughs> um, Rescue Remedy. Mm. That's an all natural product that is drops that oh, some right, people cool. have had luck with. There's like Composure Pro, which is Composure also Pro, which is a, a powder, but mm. that. That does take like six weeks to build in the right. system. So that's more long term yeah. anxiety. And then like Becca mentioned, cilio, which is a drug, um, is the advantage to using something like cilio is it addresses the panic um behind mm-hmm. the noise phobia, but it's it doesn't for no noise phobia. Yep. Yeah. And then doesn't um cause sedation. So if you want your dog to be able to, you know, participate, then you can use something like cilio to take away the panic, but yet they can still move. Whereas something like trazodone, which is really helpful because it just kind of chills them out but they're not going to participate well you would hope that they just go and relax you know that'd be the purpose behind using something like trazodone or xanax Mm -hmm. um fluoxetine fluoxetine would be like longer term anxiety it does take a while you can at least a month to build in the system 14 days Yeah. yeah i mean you can use it like if you look at the research i mean there is some thoughts behind like a short term use but the dosage is different and so we don't, we just don't use it very often for that purpose no. for situational yeah. anxiety. We just don't use it very melatonin, often. Melatonin, maybe. Melatonin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It just depends on the dog and how sensitive they are. And yeah. Yeah. I would definitely yeah. test it before. I think the see. other thing to remember is that dogs will escalate their response. So if they, you know, if you're noticing panic or anxiety in your dog, then it's be- even though it may not be bad, it's best to probably address it sooner than later like don't wait for them to be you know chewing through your closet door (laughs) or you know what i mean or you know i don't know bothering the neighbors so much the neighbors say something because the the sooner you interrupt the behavior the easier it is you know because you don't need to use as strong of products but then you keep it from escalating over time because anxiety just worsens as they get older yeah so i think don't be afraid to pull the trigger and use something if you need to use something yep in the safe place. It's so important. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't force anything. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes the safe person as well. I know that I've noticed with Sirius, he reacts worse to fireworks or thunderstorms if I'm not there. Because I've had, you know, he's stayed with friends or my parents or something. And they're like, yeah, he's running around the house trying to find you because, mm-hmm. you know, it's raining outside or there's fireworks and he doesn't know what's going on and he needs to make sure you're safe. But as soon as I get home. He relaxes. He's like, everybody I know is in this place. So sometimes I know it's fun to watch fireworks, but sometimes if you need to, sometimes just staying there so that they know where everybody is, then they're not stressing out about what's going on outside and where are my people at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you are going to try drugs, try them ahead of time so you can, we can help you make adjustments. Yes. Because then you can have something that's effective. Yeah. When you actually need it. Yep. There we go. Great timing. Is there anything we forgot? No. no, I don't know. Why are you looking at me like that? Like, you yeah. know, I'm just thinking that. of the <laughs> spiel I give in the room. We talked about all the options. Oh, you talking about, oh, fire, yeah, loud noises. For fire, mm. for noise phobias. No, definitely. We always tend to start low, then go higher with meds. Yeah. So that's why starting mm-hmm. early is important, making sure that you have enough time for it to be in the system. You can desensitize noises. It's very labor intensive. Very labor intensive. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, there and is a... Yeah, mm-hmm. a training you can do, you know, behavior modification while, yeah. with yep. desensitizing noises, but yeah, because you can find like YouTube videos of fireworks and things like that to get them used to the noises. But it does take a while, and it would be something that you'd be doing all year for, you know, right. one day. Yeah. Sure. So there's more dogs with noise phobias than I ever would have thought of. Really? 
I mean, just like in general, like, I'm just like, wow. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it just has to do with, I think, when they're younger and what they're exposed to, what they're okay. exposed to during the certain phases and that fear phase when they're a puppy. And like, where did they hear like a, a car backfiring or did yeah. they, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's unbelievable the number yeah. of pets that we use meds on because of noises. Yeah, like thunderstorms. Situational anxiety yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Yeah. But we know a lot about it now. So <laughs> that's why they start with the industry so early because anyway. mm-hmm. the gun the gunfire. Yep. Hmm. So there we go. Very All cool. Right. Great. Nice. And very timely, like you said, because July yes. 4th is coming up. So yeah. If you need your drugs, call now. <laughs> yes. Now. Now. Yes. Wait. Now. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Last minute. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we can help you out now, and it's a little bit easier than trying to get it all figured out on July fourth. Well, we won't. Well, be we're here. not here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I feel like all the cities do them like they stagger them. Yeah. Like, you know, so like Fishers is on this day, Carmel's on this day, yep. Noblesville's on this day, Westville's on this day, and so then it's like you got four days. Then you've got neighbors, you know, like us that are like letting <laughs> off fireworks. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's oh my god. <laughs> I used to live by Connor Prairie and they set them off like almost every weekend. Yeah. So it's like oh, yeah. there are some places that every weekend, all summer long, whether it's 4th of July or not, you're still going to hear them. Yeah. The one thing I will say that as we wrap up is if you have a puppy and there those noises are happening, you really do not want to um, exhibit any kind of association with the noise. You know, so like a lot of people just because people are very loving towards their pets want to be like, it's okay. No worries. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, you're basically creating the anxiety. Mm -hmm. You really need to ignore the dog when the noises are happening so that they realize that this is nothing. Everyday life. Everyday life. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah. just in case we can That's prevent good. it for some <laughs> puppies this weekend. <laughs> Help those few out there. Yeah, because yeah, no, there no are puppies. You know, because everybody wants to take them to the festivals and stuff. Yeah. Or, you know, they're five months old or whatever, and they're going to take them to the fireworks. And mm-hmm. sounds like a great idea. Until, Until it's, it's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, gosh. Anyway, so. Well, you guys, right. we did it. We Yay. did it. But another one in the book. You two are awesome. Ooh. Thanks for yes, joining thanks us. For being here. Welcome. Thanks for yeah. having us. Sharing your stories and everything. Thanks for listening. Look at uh, look us up. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> you're gonna drive Harrison yeah, crazy. His, his face. <laughs> On our social media platform. Yes. Thank you, Becca. Uh, the vendor roundtable. That's what this is. Until okay. our until the next episode. We are All Star Veterinary Clinic. And we will see you in a few weeks for the next episode of Veterinary Roundtable. (laughs) See ya. Bye.